This is Chicago's very own WGN Morning News at 5. Next at 5, police investigate a shooting in the northwest suburbs that left two people dead. We're live with the latest. Plus, dozens of Central American migrants are stuck at the U.S.-Mexico border, vowing to wait there until they're granted asylum. Then meet a man in New York who's inspiring hundreds of people this morning, how he's serving those people blind. Good morning, everyone. I'm Courtney Hall. Dan Ponce has the morning off. And I'm Lauren Jiggetts. Before we get to today's top stories, let's check in first with Morgan for a quick look at the forecast. Good morning, hey, Morgan. Morgan. Hey, good morning. Coldest spot is up in Waukegan. You're at 34 degrees there. It's 43 in Chicago at the lakefront, 41 in Crystal Lake, 45 in Peru, but 39 in Morris, 35 in Kankakee, and 37 in Rensselaer. Still 43 at Midway Airport. Anywhere from 34 to 45 degrees this morning with a calm wind. Good news is that means no wind chill factor. This will ramp up here as we get into the afternoon, but that plus sunshine going to help to get us to 70 degrees by noon today. Most of us reach anywhere from about 75 to 78. Plus, plenty of sun. We'll keep a few clouds overnight, but that clears out for your Tuesday when even warmer air enters the Chicago land. I'll have that forecast coming up in just under 10 minutes. But first, Sarah's here with your traffic. Hey, Sarah. All right. Thank you, Morgan. Take a look at this, guys. This is very clear for us so far this morning. A lot of that overnight work we had has been picked up, so no major delays as you're heading into the Janeburn Interchange. Even the Dan Ryan through I-55 looks just fine early on this morning. couple of crashes we are watching, though. One on the south side here at 63rd and Wentworth, and then you've got another one in the Crest Hill area at US 30 and Caton Farm. That one's involving a motorcyclist response to that, so expect some added delays there at that intersection. Guys? Our top story this morning, a shooting in Elgin left two people dead. Courtney Guzman is live at Elgin Police Headquarters with the details. Good morning, Courtney. Well, good morning to you. Elgin police are now questioning two persons of interest here in relation to that deadly shooting that killed two people in a parking lot at an Elgin apartment complex. Now, police converged on the Garden Quarter apartment complex that's on Longwood Place. The shooting happening just minutes after two Sunday afternoon. Clothes and shoes marked the spot where the victims were likely treated by paramedics. Blood stains were also left behind. Crime scene techs could be collecting evidence and there was also a drone at the scene. Police used their K McHenry County mobile field unit to coordinate their efforts. Those who live in the complex say police were searching a nearby wooded area using canines. There's a park that sits right next door and since it was such a nice day, residents say several children were around when those shots were fired. We heard uh, two shots from our apartment over in building 12 and we saw a bunch of kids running past our window. So we came outside with our dog to see what happened. Um, we saw the squad cars going back and forth trying to look for um, the shooter. So we are still waiting to learn the identities of those two people who were killed in that shooting. Police hope to have some more information later on this morning. Reporting live from Elgin, Courtney Gooseman, WGN News. New overnight, a teenager was shot and wounded during a robbery attempt on the south side. It happened just before midnight at the H&M warehouse at 71st and State. Two young men entered the store and shot the 17-year-old in the neck. Then they left in a white Mazda, crashed into another vehicle a few feet away and tried to run off. At last report, the wounded team was in critical condition. Police are holding two people for questioning. No names have been released yet. A five-year-old girl was hit by a stray bullet while walking to the park on the northwest side. Two men were arguing in the 4600 block of North Monticello yesterday afternoon when one of them pulled out a gun and opened fire. One bullet hit Michaela Gant in the ankle. Doctors are now trying to determine whether that bullet can be removed. So far, no one in custody. And we have an update to the stolen money from Holy Name Cathedral. Two men who worked for a security company are now charged. Police say Artemia Caldron and Jarrell Patterson used a key to get into the church and then took money from a safe. The burglary took place earlier this month. The Tribune reported last week that as much as $100,000 was stolen. The suspects were identified through surveillance video. Both are scheduled to appear in bond court today. After a month-long journey from Central America to the U.S.-Mexico border, a caravan of migrants face another obstacle. They have to plead their case to get asylum in the United States. John Lawrence has a story. These migrants from Central America traveled more than 3,000 miles. 
No crea que es fácil tomar una decisión dejar nuestra familia. And although their caravan made it to the U.S.-Mexico border near San Diego, the journey isn't complete. The migrants will surrender to border officials and say why they want to enter the U.S. If the uh, interview goes well, then they can follow through with that case either through immigration court or through the asylum office, depending on the case. Or if it's denied, then they can request a review of that hearing with the immigration court directly. President Trump has had harsh words about the migrant caravan, calling the situation a mess. We've gotten Mexico to work with us on stopping a lot of what's pouring in, but we have the worst laws anywhere in the world. Others are more sympathetic. We've always been a country that helps the weary traveler, and we should do it, as I said, in a way where we come together and, and put in place immigration laws that protect the border, but also, you know, uphold that responsibility of taking care of people. Dozens of migrants say they will stay outside an immigration center until every last one is allowed into the U.S. John Lawrence, WGN News. Community activists and supporters rallied for immigrants at a vigil in Forest Park last night. There was a local show of support for the caravan of those seeking asylum. Applicants for asylum must prove they've been persecuted or fear persecution based on their race, religion, nationality, or political beliefs. Most have lost their cases in recent years. There's some skepticism on whether North Korea will follow through on shutting down its main nuclear test site next month. The North Koreans have already agreed to this. They agreed to it in 1992 with South Korea, and they've pledged similar things since then. Now, it's also the case that they've lied about it and broken their commitments, which is one reason there's nobody in the Trump administration starry-eyed about what, uh, what may happen here. So it is, I think, prudent for us to go into this with uh, some uh, skepticism about our own capabilities, but also that means we have to insist upon a rigorous inspection regime in North Korea. Meanwhile, South Korea says it will remove speakers near the border that broadcast propaganda. It turned off the speakers ahead of last week's talks, and North Korea responded by stopping its own broadcast. Preparations are now underway for President Trump to meet with North Korean leader Kim Jong-un. Nigerian President Muhammadu Buhari meets with President Trump in Washington today. He'll be the first African leader to be received by President Trump. They'll discuss shared economics and fighting terrorism. Nigeria has faced a nine-year insurgency by Boko Haram jihadists. The many will be also watching their talks after Mr. Trump's controversial crude remark describing African nations back in January. All right, check out this unusual sight on the streets of Des Moines, Iowa last week. Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> it's a giant rubber ducky. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> yeah. It's kept rolling. Who owns the balloon? Rolling. Who owns the balloon? I, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Where did that come from? Well, an oversized bathtub accessory was rolling down the street. As you can see, the giant rubber ducky balloon was on display to promote a local duck derby. <laughs> it was blown away by strong winds. Crews didn't have a hard time tracking it down, though, as you can imagine. It was quickly scooped up a few blocks away and returned to its home. I love how people are just trying to drive around. <laughs> I, right? <laughs> just so. Just well, what would you do, Lauren? Would you yeah. get out of your car and no, start pulling no, it? I would just be, I would be kind of like, what the heck is going on? Take it home. <laughs> like attach it to your car, drag it home. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> hey, Morgan. All right, hey, we've got gusty winds here in place as well. Not quite yet this morning. That comes this afternoon. It's 40 degrees at O'Hare Airport, 37 in Lansing, down to 34 now in Valparaiso and up in Waukegan. So heads up, a little bit on the cool side there. 44 in Peru, 35 in Kankakee, and 36 degrees near NAU uh, in DeKalb. Mostly clear sky. That'll set us up for sunshine here today. Not much happening. We've got a uh, few showers moving off to our north. Cloud cover stays off, off to our north and west as well. We should stay mainly sunny. This is going to change a little bit. Right now, a southeast wind around five, six, seven miles per hour in place. This turns more south southwest today, and it picks up. That pulls in warmer air for us, but it also helps contribute to this. A red flag warning in place for anybody in pink. That's Lake McHenry, Kane, Kendall, uh, DeKalb, and LaSalle County. That starts this afternoon, and it lasts until later this evening. It basically means critical fire weather conditions are in place throughout the afternoon today. So if a fire starts or if you start one yourself, 
potentially rapid growth of that because we have those gusty winds. Those will gust as high as 30 miles per hour. They're sustained closer to 15. And this is really key in it. We've got really, really dry air. It's good because it means no humidity in place today, but it's not so good because it continues to promote that critical fire weather. Dew points in the 40s, and it's been that way through the weekend as well. So uh, really dry setup. Muggy conditions don't set in until later this week. 77 here today with sunshine. Middle and upper 70s. 53 overnight tonight. A couple of clouds. Uh, partly cloudy, but those are gone by tomorrow where we see the 80s. 82 and windy still. All three of these days a bit breezy. A few more clouds on Wednesday. Still upper 70s. Could see a few showers Wednesday afternoon. 20 to 30 percent chance. Better chance to see those Wednesday night into Thursday. I'll have that Thursday forecast coming up in my seven day, which is next. First, Sarah's here back with the traffic. Hey, Sarah. Hey, thanks, Morgan. We do have some new construction that starts today on Ashland, so keep this in mind. As you're heading southbound on Ashland, right at 66, everything's going to be shut down for sewer work, so they're detouring everyone to Damon. It's going to be like that for four weeks. Now, once they're done with that in four weeks, they're going to move a little further south to 68th Street, and that will last another four weeks. So watch for that closure, again, southbound on Ashland. Travel times right now look really good if you're on the Edens. 15 minutes in both directions. The Kennedy Inn from O'Hare 16, that's the same, heading out to the airport. Over to the Ike in from 390, 27 minutes. The Stevenson in from 355, also 27. And the Dan Ryan, you are delay free there, both directions. Bishop Ford, I 57, still in good shape as you're heading into the merge. Nice flight for us so far this morning. Okay. All right, thank you, Sarah. Still ahead, the White House Correspondents' Dinner over the weekend is receiving a lot of backlash this morning. What the events organizer is saying about host Michelle Wolf. Also, an explosion during a backyard bonfire in the suburbs injures at least eight teenagers. Details on what happened coming up in a live report at 5.30. And coming up in sports, the Cubs bring out the brooms and sweep the brewers. We've got your highlights. Stay with us for that.